Hello, fifth graders, it's Mrs. Bellatash. Happy New Year to you. I am really hopeful for 2021, and I hope you are too. It was great getting to be with you uh, last week and the last time we had science together uh, to be live with you and to actually play that um, owl food chain game. I hope you had a lot of fun, and I hope you learned about how each level of the food chain is important. Each one of you got a little packet of cards like this. And there were about four different environments that I sent home. One was a kelp, Monterey Bay kelp uh, forest. Then there was the mono lake and there was a wood system. And I believe there was one in a pond. Um, but what I would like you to do is take these cards out and let's take a look at them. On each card, there is a picture and the name of the organism. And it talks about its history, its food, and whether it's a predator or not, or what the predator is of this organism. So this one is giant kelp. And its history, it is giant kelp grow in large, thick strands on rocks. Its food is that it makes its own food through photosynthesis. So that means it is a producer. And its predator are abalone, crabs, sea urchins, and fish. So this is a producer. I'm going to read another card. Oh, this is such a cute little guy. This is a sea otter. Oh, it's so cute. Sea otters rarely leave the water. They dive to the bottom of the kelp forest in search of food. When it finds food, the sea otter returns to the surface and floats on its back to eat its meal. Food. It eats sea urchins, turban snails, octopuses, and abalone. Its predator are killer whales. Okay, it's a pretty cute little guy. So I want you to look at all of the cards and try to start putting them into categories. Categories could be producers, consumers, decomposers. You could look at herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. So start looking at the cards and understanding the relationships between the organisms. Okay, after I organized my cards, I started to see that some things made food, my producers down at the bottom. Some things ate them, consumers. And then the bacteria recycled everything. And so now I created a comprehensive food web. Here is my food web for the kelp forest in Monterey Bay. You can see it's very connected. One of the things that's very different about a food chain and a food web is that in a food chain, it's very clear. One thing eats the other, the next thing eats the next. It's very linear. But in a food web, there's all kinds of competition. But in a food chain and a food web, all of the energy comes from the sun. The energy for the entire food web comes from the sun. And that energy is captured through the process of photosynthesis by producers. So the giant kelp is a producer. So is phytoplankton. Now, all of the rest of the food web depends on those two producers. Everything above it is a consumer. Some of those consumers are predators and prey. And it's that competition among themselves that really is key. So let's take a look closely at some of the competition and some of the situations that are in this food web. One of the strangest ones is this fish called the Garibaldi fish. So the, the Garibaldi eats sponges, sea anemones, 
algae, algae is another word for phytoplankton, worms, crustaceans such as crabs, clams, mussels, snail eggs, and their own eggs. The female, the mother Garibaldi, has, she will actually eat her own eggs. The father drives her away and he protects the eggs. So that's why I have that curly arrow because she will actually eat her own eggs. One thing that I hope you see is that every organism on this board, when it dies, decomposes through marine bacteria. And then the marine bacteria takes all of those nutrients and puts it back into the system, back down to the producers. So work in groups and using your cards, create a comprehensive food web for the cards that you have. You might want to put them on a piece of construction paper or uh, maybe on a big piece of newspaper. To wrap up, I'd like us to look at this page. It's response sheet investigation number one. And it says, a student drew this food web in his notebook. Another student was looking at it and said, I agree with the organisms you've used in your food web but I disagree with the direction you drew arrows. I also think you are missing something. Food webs usually include producers, consumers, and the sun. If you were a third student taking part in this conversation, what would you tell the other Let's two? Let's take a look at this picture. So there is the bird, and the arrow goes from the bird to the snake, and from the bird to the rabbit. And that and the bird to the mouse. And so those arrows mean that the snake, the rabbit, and the mouse all eat the bird. That means that the energy from the bird goes into those organisms. That's not correct, right? The bird, the hawk, eats the snake. The hawk eats the mouse. The hawk eats the rabbit. So all of these arrows need to go in the other direction. What's, what else about these? We see flowers and we see grass and we see rabbits and we have sea hawk. And those are the names of those organisms. But instead of naming them that, they should be called producers, consumers, and uh, you could talk about herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. Okay, so I'm looking forward to seeing your final food webs for your groups, for your uh, um, environments. Next week, we're gonna be talking about yeast. So um, if any of you guys have been, been doing any bread baking, make sure that you have a little bit of yeast because we're gonna do a little experiment using yeast next week. I love being back with you guys. Happy 2021. See you next week.